Hello, people of the internet. Welcome back to Whiteboard Wednesday. It is the content you didn't know you needed, probably don't want, but will receive anyway. My name is Kenny, aka KDJTV, and today I will be educating the masses on, with this pointer, how to make a cap in MLB The Show 23. There are many types of caps in this world. Of course, you have the baseball cap, you have driver's caps, a sombrero, one of those silly little things that goes on your, the top of your head has got the spinny wheel. You could be like Bill Murray in Space Jam and wear an umbrella hat on the golf course. But the cap we are talking about today has nothing to do with any of that. For the newbies in the audience, we are talking about caps create a player. Okay? You're creating a player from scratch in Road to the Show and then probably bringing him onto your Diamond Dynasty uh, online squad. Now, the beauty of a cap, a created player, is that you can mold it to your needs. You can make it literally a version of yourself in the video game. You could also make it a completely cracked out animal early in the game that just destroys pitching because everybody's so low ranked. But there are many, many strategies to go about when building your cap, if, especially if you want to do it effectively, right? You could just go ahead and create whatever you want, or you could do it the best way. And that's what I'm here today to teach you all the best way to make a creative player in MLB The Show. Boys and girls, before we really get into today's video, I just want to let you all know that I am running a giveaway over on Twitter for a free digital deluxe edition of MLB The Show 23. I will pin the tweet in the description. All you have to do, it's really simple. Retweet the tweet, follow me on Twitter, and then just subscribe to my YouTube channel and make sure you post a screenshot in the comments under the tweet that you subscribed. I will be announcing the winner on March 17th, exactly one week before early access for the game drops on March 24th. I am trying to do YouTube content big this year, news updates, the show, the podcast, everything and more, plus a couple surprises. Make sure you subscribe and thank you guys for entering the giveaway. And now without any more nonsense, let's get to the video. Step one in customizing your creative player is making him the right size. That sounds pretty simple, right? I'm 5'9", a solid 165 on the dating apps, 6 foot 200, but that is my problem, not yours. But listen, you can make it yourself. Like I said, if you're a nice 5'9", 165 piece of cake like me, boom, bang, done. But don't worry, I've done the research and I have found the most optimal builds for you to use. Now, in MLB The Show 22, the smallest cap you can create is 5'5", five 150 pounds. Now, that's a tiny little boy. I do think you should be able to make him tinier, but that's just my, uh, my silly brain at work. The biggest you can make one is 6'10", 290 pounds. Now, that is not realistic, because let me tell you something. If Prince Fielder was 290 pounds, it was probably after he was on the Atkins diet. That man was large. CC Sabathia, at his biggest playing weight, was easily over 290. I don't care what the official scorebook said for the Yankees. That man was packing 310 pounds easy. But either way, opinions aside, you can make a super small one, a super big one, or a realistic human being like myself, like I said before. Or here's the best one for you. The goal of the cap... I'll let you guys in on a little secret here. I haven't said this yet. The goal of the cap is to make it the ugliest human being on the face of planet Earth. It's not supposed to be pretty. It's not supposed to win any good looks awards. It is supposed to be literally uglier than the troll under the bridge. Now, it's important to know that the height and weight uh, relationship is a sliding scale. So you cannot simply create a 5'5", five 290-pound cinder block of a human being, nor can you create a 6 foot 10, 150 pound, uh, literally marker that looks like this. So the max for 5'5 five five is 220. The minimum for 6'10 is 180. Okay. So to make your cap work the best, we need to go to the extremes, the opposite end of the spectrum. If the max is 290 for a 6 foot 10 fellow, the minimum's 180. That's exactly where we're going. We're going 6'10, 180. For the, the mini guy, 5'5", five five, we can go 150 on the small end, but boom, no, we're going to go to 220 on the big end because we, again, are trying to create a creature of the night that would probably make infant children scream. By the time you're finished playing with the size, your character should look like one of two things. It should look like the great Hambino or if Randy Johnson didn't eat for three years. Look how happy they are. Next up, we need to talk facial features. MLB The Show gives you a variety of absolutely intensely insane detail 
on how to change up the face of your creative player. It's actually remarkable how many options they give you, considering how little options they give you across the rest of the game for actual gameplay. Now, if you do this correctly, your character should look like the type of person who used to pick his boogers and then either wipe them under the desk in high school or, like, do a quick peek right and left and then, like, pretend he's picking his teeth, stick that booger right up in there. Your character is not supposed to look good. It's not supposed to look cute. It's actually really, really supposed to be like a complete mockery of humankind. There is no actual strategy to doing this, of course. By putting together a creature that looks literally exactly like this. Your hope is that your opponent will be so caught off guard, possibly laughing at the at the monstrosity that you've created, the garden gnome that you have set forth onto the baseball diamond, that he will make a mistake and toss you a cookie right down the middle. And don't forget, while we're on the subject of facial features, this really just simply extends to all features outside of height and weight. We could talk shoulder width, uh, leg strength, uh, chest breath, literally any option you could imagine. And don't forget to take a, a, a second to change your character's jersey number to the appropriate one. Now, we all know there's literally only one option, and I'm going to tell you guys a secret. We're going to write it right here. If that is not the number of your created player, I don't know what you're doing with your life. This unlocks a secret power boost that actually maxes your stats to 169. YouTube, very important here because you'll make a lasting impression on really the entire internet with the correct naming of your cap. And don't worry, I'm not going to leave you out to dry. Don't be so silly as to name your cap your name for obvious reasons. We don't want people stealing your identity and social security number for doing that. But we do want your opponent to be like, wow, that name is going to change my life. So, because I love you, I have eight name options that I will provide you. Feel free to take them. Just credit me in the comments. You've all heard of the childhood story, Rumpled Stiltskin. Well, here you go. Here's Rumpled Foreskin, a perfect name for your cat. This next name is especially applicable if you chose the 5'5", five 220-pound five, uh, style garden gnome that we've created. It's Humpty McDumper, because we all know at that body construction, he got himself a wagon. Gooch McAllister. I don't know what it means, but Gooch is a fun word, and McAllister sounds perfect with it. So go ahead, take it, put it on your character. This name in particular is a ton of fun. I love names that give a little spice to life. How about in Casey Feltersnatch? Benjamin Dover is a personal favorite of mine because you're not outright saying what we all know you mean to say, but it's all about the implication, as they said on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And this one implies a classic... Um, fundamentally sound grasp of 21st century comedy. The next name is perfectly applicable to baseball. It's any position. And what does any position tell me? It says, hey coach, I am ready to sprawl my body all over the field to make any sorts of plays that you require to make the team feel better. If your player is six foot 10, 180 pounds, guarantee he's probably got some problems somewhere on his body. So Harry Glands, AKA Harry Glands, you'd probably say it Harry. I enjoy that one quite a bit. I love the Z at the end. You know how some parents prefer to spell Caitlin Q-A-T-L-Z-N. It's a silent Z, kind of like that. Love it there. And lastly, Matt Damon. All right, number four. This one is of course position specific. You're gonna choose a swing. now. Logic would tell you to choose the swing that you are most comfortable with. Hopefully by this point you've taken hundreds of online at-bats, you've tried out a bunch of live series cards, maybe you've played Battle Royale to get a feel for the variety of cards that MLB The Show offers. So by now you should know which swings you do great with and which swings maybe not so much. Now, are you a left-handed hitter? Maybe you swing right-handed. It does not matter, because today I'm here to tell you that you're a switch hitter with your creative player. And why would you be a switch hitter, perhaps, when in real life you are a perfectly fine-suited, slappy, left-handed bat? Because you have to remember, YouTube, the point of the cap is always to cause as much general annoyance as humanly possible. Again, you're not trying to create an actually valid baseball player. You're trying to just make your opponent rage quit instantly as soon as possible. So by doing a switch hitting build, the person will never have a platoon advantage, and that gives you the opportunity to really hammer this over the head with the glitchiest swings the game offers. Now, the goal with your cap, of course, is to not be good at the game. You're just trying to get bailed as much as possible. So who are the most bailed hitters in MLB The Show? You could argue these are the four. Adalberto Mondesi, he's got the fastest swing that generates unreasonable pop, 
And honestly, your cap with Adalberto Mondesi swing would have a better career than Barry Bonds. Or you could go with Trey Turner, who, as we said in last week's uh, Whiteboard Wednesday, is the definition of bailed in the MLB The Show community. Next is Juan Soto. It does not matter where the pitch is delivered. It does not matter how early or late you swing. As long as you are even a ball hair under the ball, it is going to travel very far. You will hit no doubt homers that you have no business even hitting in fair territory with Juan Soto. And lastly is Vlad Sr. He is a literal walking cheat code. Anybody who uses Vlad Sr. by endgame is probably the king or queen of being bailed on outside pitches because this man just hits anything he can get his eyes on. And before you put it in the comment section, yes, I know, he was a bad ball hitter in real life and a Hall of Fame player and certainly deserved it. That does not change the fact that facing him in MLB The Show is like having cancer of the rectum. The last big step here is if you're a pitcher, well, we have to, of course, build out your repertoire, build out your pitching uh, demeanor, your intimidation factor on the mound. I have a list here of five things that no doubt you will want to equip your pitcher with. Now, with the pitcher, it does not necessarily matter if you want him to be a left-hander or a right-hander. That, actually, in all seriousness, for the first time in this video, is entirely your preference. You do you, do whichever you'd like. All right, so you're going to want a five-pitch mix on your pitcher, first of all. Why would you limit yourself with three or four pitches? I suggest you go maximum velocity on the fastball and or sinker. I do suggest having both. They play off each other nicely, but with the way sinkers work, a max velo 101 mile an hour sinker might as well be 200 mile an hour shot out of an RPG. You guys all remember when hoverboards were a thing and you were zipping around maybe your driveway or, or on the streets, if you were, and, and it began to die. And it just began to die suddenly. And it just went from zooming speeds to like barely crawling as you careened down the driveway and probably fractured your skull because those were unsafe and they lit on fire. But now use that very janky metaphor to imagine the slowest changeup possible coming off a 102 mile an hour fastball. I'm talking changeup like in the 67 to 69, very nice, mile an hour range. This will ensure maximum stupid swingetry on your opponent's behalf because the second they start horning up for 102, 69 is gonna make them look silly. A knuckleball? Of course you have to give your pitcher a knuckleball. It is the peak of pitching talent to be able to pinpoint a knuckleball. Now, pitching a knuckleball automatically makes you the worst human being on the face of planet Earth. It does, however, make your cap seemingly unhittable on the mound. Delivery options. There are, of course, a plethora of delivery options, literally hundreds upon maybe even thousands to choose from. But there is one right answer here, and I don't want you to think too hard. Find the wackiest submarine delivery humanly possible and slap it on your cap immediately. It's going to make people upset. It's going to make people rage quit. It's going to make people message you after games. But I look at messages after games as this. New friends. We all know that the best and most effective way to mess with a hitter's timing is to change up your delivery, right? Don't always take the same amount of time from point A to point B to releasing the ball. So I suggest at least every third pitch, slide stepping. Why? Because slide stepping makes people really, really angry. Here's a sixth bonus step for everybody. Don't use a cap in Diamond Dynasty. I am here to tell you that there is a 0% need to use a cap in Diamond Dynasty. SDS, for all of its shortcomings, honestly does a phenomenal job giving you tons of depth with legends and flashback cards at basically every position in the game. Yes, you could argue that caps on day one are automatically the best cards in the game, but with content changing and the rollout changing in Emily The Show 23, I'm not quite sure that's going to be the case anymore. And creating a cap for all the reasons we just listed earlier in this video is a great way to, being serious now, not make friends, piss off every competitor you face, and honestly, probably even get yourself in trouble because if you name your character the wrong thing, if you say the wrong thing, do the wrong thing, be the wrong thing, the SDS police are coming for you. YouTube, that brings us to the end of today's Whiteboard Wednesday. I hope you enjoyed this obviously funny take on how to create a cap or better titled How Not to Create a Cap. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. We are on the road to 500, trying to get there before the drop of Enemy the Show 23. We are so close. All it'll take is a couple weeks and a couple good videos to get there. But if you don't subscribe, one, you'll make me very upset, but you'll also be doomed to seven weeks of shorts.